thank you very much, uh, my dear uh, uh, friend, and uh, thank you very much, uh, 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 all uh, professors and uh, chairmen. Uh, and I would like also to uh, thank you for your attendance uh, this morning. Hopefully that uh, this will be a very successful Congress. Uh, and I would like also to deeply thank uh, all the working group contributors and uh, the approval uh, team, and especially thanks to professors from different countries, uh, from different universities and reviewers, and from uh, everyone who chaired the thoughts uh, written reviewing uh, the, all the guidelines in hemodialysis, and uh, very special thanks to uh, senior uh, professors who reviewed in depth the, all the guidelines parameters. So uh, uh, in, uh, in this year, starting from 2020, we have a, a constitution for hemodialysis starting from January, and it's published uh, already online, and we expect to have the uh, copy within the next month. So while we are in the need of a guideline and what chapters and Egyptian versus internationals, and it is uh, affordable or not, and applications and other questions and answers. So while we are in need of a guideline, a guideline is different from the country in constitution because it's applied in progress and achievement and improvement is a continuous rather than the country constitution, which should be 100%. And the Egyptian guideline is a dynamic one, meaning that professors and colleagues are welcome for discussion and the future editions, as well recording the feedback and the clinical practice in different centers uh, is coming for these guidelines. EG NICE, it's a fitting puzzle for all the nephrological needs in hemodialysis service, starting from the flux, CKD, MPD, anemia, vascular access, safe ultrafiltration, and hemodialysis addicts. So the guidelines that should meet all the patient's needs fulfill the three major pH in dialysis, which meaning that solid flux, physiology, philosophy of therapy, and the physics of dialysis membrane. So we understand the hemodialysis procedures, and we understand the solids accumulation and the toxins. We are trying to manage our patient in the optimum care. So a guideline that should meet all the patient need, improve quality of life, prevent organ damage, and preserve residual kidney function, plus survival as in renal transplantation. So if our dialysis improve anemia, prevent organ stunning, control bone diseases, minimal inflammation, and prevent cardiovascular disease is essential. And the Nephrology Initiative of Care and Excellency in its part one as a strategy guide and the monitoring clinical performance monitoring. So hemodialysis prescription, it's a multi-dimensional way, looking for the dose, metabolic profile, control of blood pressure, control of volume status, control of all patient needs, as well key points in nutrition and no inflammation. So registry team are our partner, and we all thanks uh, the hard work they are uh, collecting data from different uh, centers. And uh, when we are looking to the world around, it is growing so fast, going to the 5G and the digital health, and uh, could be artificial intelligence be the answer to a plethora of many of healthy care problems. The art of data here, uh, we have uh, two types. We have to overcome the restricted data and the limited data. So we have uh, to collect as much as we can from the uh, data. And data is the only eliminating hope for improvement, non-restrictive and non-limited. Uh, uh, we cannot fix what we cannot uh, measure. So I, I, uh, I hopefully that uh, we can collect more and more data from different centers. When you look to Africa, Egypt won of the uh, initiation of dialysis in 1964, and it's now 55 years on dialysis. We have sufficient structures. We have 100% mainly covered, full knowledge base, and as well manpower. So it's a 50, 55 years we have to start the quality uh, management uh, system that improve definitely the uh, outcome of uh, dialysis patient. The structure and manpower here, we uh, look for the unit structure, human resources to build up a unit 
uh, with hemodialysis based on uh, membranes, structure, vascular access, frequency, standard operating procedures, and as well clinical performance management. So, of course, we are here looking for the unit structure, the manpower, the process of the hemodialysis, and then we can measure the healthcare outcome. The structures mainly, uh, ten, 10 points should be fulfilled. We have to put as well a clinic for nutritional, social, transplantation guide, technicians and nursing discussion room, patient education, as well administration. This is a guide for structure of new uh, units. As well, the educational process, we do uh, a lot of educational material concerning the hemodialysis in depth. Teleconferences is usually active every week, thanks to Professor Hassan Shaisha for acting so, so active uh, in the process of education as well uh, 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 far away from education, any country can join uh, Professor Hassan Shaif. So why we are in need of a guideline, it's a hemodialysis guidelines as well monitoring, and we have to do a monitoring, achievement, and improvement with the specific domains. Once we start monitoring, we can discuss how to progress for a uh, better uh, healthcare outcome. When you look to the DOPS, you, you can find that uh, for ed each country, uh, uh, different parameters like anemia, vascular access, ultrafiltration rate, blood flow rate, and uh, uh, as well uh, urea reduction ratio. This is published maybe every three months, every six months, or at least uh, annually. So the measuring the outcome to the nephrologist need and true patient needs, and this is uh, recently discussed in the New York Times, that patients are not interested in our KT overview. Patients need more uh, uh, service. True patients need our, can travel, enjoy him with us three days, eat free, no pain, no depression, and no family, nor social burden. Such guidelines should look as well for true patient needs, not only for nephrologist KT over V. So we have shortened lifespan, depressions, disabilities, and if we can do a dialysis uh, with uh, stronger uh, peoples, we'll have a better outcome. Reporting each information will be of value, and our scope is designed to provide information and to optimize patient management to the excellency of hemodialysis uh, therapy. EGNIS is here for, uh, uh, and born to be personalized and to be individualized. And this individualization for high flux membrane. We, we don't recommend using any more of low flux membrane and should be personalized. And if you look to do the personalization of around 60,000 patients in Egypt, we have a planning, risk assessment, monitoring, identifying more patients at risk, and then you can individualize your patient for the, as excellently described, magnesium, potassium, flux, conviction, time, frequency, as well as nutritional support. So why, how, why we are in need of a guideline? We have to have a guide for all center, unique book for all needed requirement, continuous improving evaluation of the center promoting high quality service using the utmost standard and uh, a plethora of clinical variables in between centers. This should be harmonized into a standardized therapy. We all thank Professor Dr. Adel Afifi, who more than uh, 20 years, who started the registry, and we, thong, we thank as well in Shams University for its publication five years ago on around 25 patients 25,000 patients on dialysis for the using low flux, K2 over V, uh, surface area of dialysis, hepatitis C, and the other. We are uh, very optimized for the great team of the registry to start their uh, collecting data, then we can further analysis, registry, and improvement techniques. So, why we are in need of a guideline? It is a scientific and a regulatory, and here we want to do it. We want to do, we are in the stage of we want to do a guideline to harmonize all the therapy. What's the chapters? It's a lot of chapters. It's out of the scope of this talk. It needs days to discuss chapters, but I will highlight very uh, rapidly hemodialysis strategies in 15 points, starting from when to initiate dialysis and the ending for the infection control and the rationale for hemodialysis strategies. Dialysis treatment options, 
And the differences between Egyptians versus the international guidelines, there is no difference. It is uh, uh, more or less in accordance to all the guidelines and the publications all over the past 10 years. So does this guideline is affordable and it is very important in Egypt to implement a guideline, but the cost of the guideline is high. So direct cost and non-direct cost, intangible cost, and the, uh, other costs is equivalent between different countries in the disposables, but mainly in the direct cost, in the capital cost of building, is a little bit lower, but the, uh, all the medical devices are equivalent in between. We also have a, a challenge here. We lack of enough nephrologists. Country escape. And the cost in the middle-income uh, countries, when you look to other uh, middle-income countries, we found that we are so far away from this reimbursement rate. In Sudan, it's about 15,000 USD, while in Egypt, it's not more than 4,000 USD. And if you look to the European and the American or the Canadian uh, uh, cost of dialysis, you will find that 30% of the cost of dialysis is going to uh, doctors and nurses. It's much more than the supplies, dialyzers lines. While in Egypt, it's very, very low, and this may be probably escaped from a nephrologist. As well, patients with multiple uh, uh, comorbidities needs your attention because it will cost much and higher uh, than uh, usual. So the international guidelines saying that it's, it's about 29% of the overall cost is covered by the government. The patient has to pay in many of the low-income countries, and that's why we didn't have up to this moment a PD program because it's 5x the cost of uh, hemodialysis. Not because PD is expensive, but because hemodialysis is too low and it should be one-to-one -one cost, while in Egypt it's only 0.2 cost. So PD is 5x uh, cost of dialysis than in PD. What and when we should start? We should start in six steps. We are here educating the point and starting to collect the data. We, uh, uh, we think that probably within the next two to three years, we can have more and more steps in the guidelines. So CPM, clinical performance monitoring, target improvement of care, and this is the final step for improvement of dialysis units. We can also have a total performance score, 15% for safety, 15% for reporting, and 70% for clinical, with multiple variables, around 10 variables of scoring system that will be implemented in the next year. So the clinical measure centers, it will be like that. For each center, how many uh, vascular axes you have, how many AV fistula, and how uh, bone uh, mineral disease. So the selected topics, Going back to the personalized medicine, we uh, don't have a glucose containing dialysate we have encountered for that, and as well, we don't have a dialysate potassium of 3 millimole per liter. We have only uh, uh, 2 millimole per liter. As well, magnesium, as perfectly described, we don't have above 0.5 millimole per liter. So we need to have more plenty of uh, medical device for fulfilling the personalized service. All in this guideline, it is for a high flux dialysis. No low flux anymore should be used. And our target of therapy and the goal of all the multidisciplinary uh, guidelines is to redefining the adequacy means beyond urea reduction ratio to the goal of maximum quality of life and maximizing uh, survival. Blood tubing as well has a, a good chapter. It should be avoided by DHCP, which is a very toxic material, especially in pediatric patients. Implementing hemodial filtration, when, whom, how, dose, and monitoring, and the guiding for patients with good vascular access or weak vascular access to do a pre-dilutional or post-dilutional, how to implement clinical logistics economics, in steps, you can carry hemodial filtration implementation in your unit and adjusting the doses of hemodial filtration to all the patient needs, in particular the patients on regular hemodial filtration with a minimum of 23 liters per session. 
We also discussed in the guidelines the augmented hemodialysis, and this is the first time to describe the patient needs for augmented hemodialysis, especially in pregnancy. We also discussed the nutrition and how to improve the protein intake and nutritional supports, mineral requirements, stress elements, and uh, against inflammation, sarcopenia, and the frailty. We should think about that. And uh, Professor uh, uh, Kamis will discuss the post dialysis recovery time and how to overcome and improve the patient after hemodialysis. We also discussed in details the green ultrafiltration rate. So hemodialysis prescription, volume status, and ultrafiltration rate should be in a very limited to prevent organ stunning, especially the cardiac and the brain organ stunning. So we have to uh, apply this ultrafiltration rate in particular for patients with comorbidities or cardiovascular disease. In the standard operating procedure, or SOP, we have 15 points starting from the patient entrance till ending of the dialysis session, all what you need, how to manage your patient in home or in center dialysis. And also they uh, discuss the topics from the guidelines, the manpower and the human resources, identifying all the human resources, speciality, job description or GD, and the responsibility between director, manager, and operator. So this is a strategy which is around 50% of the guidelines. Other additional guidelines is uh, carried by uh, many professors and very, very elegant professor, vascular access professor Korei, all what you need in arterial venous fistula, graft or caster, how to manage, how to insert, how to protect, how to uh, uh, guard against infection, CKD, MPD, as well in details, anemia management with Professor Kamal Akash and Professor Huayda El Chinawi, all the deep thanks as well to Professor Yasser Abdel Hamid for dialysis prescription in AKI, CRRT, SLED, and other techniques. Uh, infection control policy to be implemented in all uh, uh, sessions and as well in centers, especially the hepatitis C gray zone and moving from the hepatitis C positive to hepatitis C negative, how to manage that by PCR and et cetera. So in conclusion, Mr. Uh, Chairman and uh, dear colleagues, the Egyptian hemodialysis uh, guideline is the first published this year, aiming to have uh, a care and uh, the be, uh, beyond care and excellency for the nephrology initiative uh, of care is part one. Second part for transplantation as well for glomerulopathy and the hypertension uh, is carried out here uh, this uh, few weeks uh, later. And uh, EG NICE is starting to fulfill all the needs in hemodialysis prescription, monitoring for the best outcome. Uh, EG NICE is uh, uh, simply all your need in your patients just uh, to orchestrating patients need on hemodialysis with maximum care and the least cost because we have uh, in a very low income uh, countries and the, it's clearly required to start the rule and never been late the constitution of Egyptian hemodialysis uh, should be applied and the cost management uh, program should be uh, in its optimum and finally, uh, it's my great pleasure to announce for our next hemodialysis uh, congress in uh, October. Uh, this is the first uh, uh, in Shams University ESNT chapter hemodialysis in collaboration with the International Society of Hemodialysis. First uh, congress in the Middle East will be with very eminent international speaker in October uh, 2020. Thank you all for a great team and a great work. Thank you.